guys, it's Monica. Welcome back to my channel. I'm an internal medicine attending who loves making educational videos for all levels of doctor training. And today I'm going to be doing another example oral presentation. So a few months back I did an example oral presentation for a patient who had heart failure and it was pretty well received and people seemed to find it helpful so I'm going to continue my series. And today I'm going to be talking about a patient who came in with lower extremity swelling due to an AKI or acute kidney injury. So just like in my last video, I'm going to be reading off my notes, just like you would in real life. And there was a commenter on one of my last videos, on the last video where I did the example oral presentation, that I should leave a link to the note that I'm reading off of so that you can see how I write my notes as well. And I thought that was a great idea. So please check out the link in the description box if you want to follow along. Chief complaint is leg swelling. Mr. K is a 67-year-old male with a history of recurrent D-differentiated chondrosarcoma or pembrolizumab, status post left tummy pelvectomy and total hip replacement two years ago, and BPH complicated by urinary obstruction, who presents with worsening of his chronic lower extremity and squirrel swelling for the last two days. So the story actually starts two weeks ago when he was admitted to an outside hospital for an AKI. His baseline creatinine is 1.1, and his creatinine on that admission was 3.8. During the hospitalization, he was found to have urinary obstruction, possibly due to BPH. The creatinine improved with Foley catheter replacement and an increase in his tamsulosin dose, and his creatinine on discharge was 1.8. The Foley catheter was removed prior to discharge. Since that hospitalization, he's noticed worsening bilateral leg swelling, noting that his left is much larger than his right. He's had chronic bilateral leg swelling in the past, but this is due to venous stasis and is usually symmetric. His left leg has also started to, feel, started to feel a little numb, and he's had difficulty walking, which is the primary reason he came to the ER today. He's also noticed significant squirrel swelling that's worsened over the same period of time. Lately, he's had to strain a lot to urinate, and his urine comes out in very small amounts at a time, and this has been worsening over the last two weeks. He also reports poor PO intake. He's had low appetite and nausea. He's had a five pound weight loss in the last month. He denies any chest pain, shortness of breath, orthopnea, or PND. He denies any history of liver disease, no recent medication changes. He denies abdominal pain or diarrhea. He denies any recent surgeries, prolonged immobilization, or history of DVT. He hasn't noticed any redness or pain in the left lower extremity, and he denies any recent injuries to the leg. In the ER, the patient was found to have a creatinine of 4.2, and his PVR was 500, so a Foley was placed. A CTKUB and bilateral lower ultrasound were obtained, and he was given a dose of Localma for a potassium of 5.5. For his past medical history, in addition to the cancer and the BPH that I mentioned, he has GERD and hyperlipidemia. For his past surgical history, in addition to the total hip replacement, he's had a left knee surgery. For his home medications, he's on iron supplement every other day, gabapentin 300 milligrams TID, oxycodone 5 milligrams every six hours as needed for cancer-related pain, Phenofibrate 145 milligrams daily and tansulosin 0.8 milligrams nightly. He has no known drug allergies. For his family history, his mother had breast cancer and hypertension and his father had heart disease. For social history, he lives in the house with his wife. He's independent in all ADLs and IADLs. He's previously worked as a financial advisor, but he's now on disability due to the cancer. He denies any current alcohol, drug, or tobacco use. He was never a smoker. On physical exam, since being in the ER, his vials have remained stable. He's remained afebrile, heart rate's been in the 80s, respiratory rate about 18 to 20, and blood pressure, the systolics have ranged from 140s to 160s, and his diastolics have been in the 80s, and he's having 96 to 97 percent of room air. In general, he's a well-appearing man in no acute distress, very pleasant. His head and neck exam is unremarkable. His heart exams, regular rate and rhythm, no murmur rope gallops, no JVD, no carotid brewery. For his lung exam, there's no increased work of breathing. His lungs are clear to auscultation bilaterally. For his abdominal exam, he has mild suprapubic tenderness and fullness without rebound or guarding. For his GU exam, he has symmetric scrotal swelling, no erythema or tenderness. There's a Foley in place that's draining amber urine. For his extremities, he has three plus pitting edema that extends in the lower extremities that extends all the way up to the abdomen. His left is worse than his right, and there's no erythema or overlying skin changes. His neurological exam is grossly non-focal. For his labs, his CBC was notable for a Y count of 15.8. His hemoglobin is 9, and his baseline is about 9 to 10. Platelets were 310,000. 
For his metabolic panel, his potassium, as I mentioned earlier, is 5.5, and his creatinine was 4.2. The ER metabolic panel doesn't include a BUN, so I don't have that. For his urinalysis, his spec grav was 1.025. It was negative for blood or protein, and it was also negative for nitrites or leukesterase. For microbiology, his COVID test was negative. He has two blood cultures that are pending and a urine culture that's pending. For his imaging, he got a C2KB done that showed marked interval increase in size and extent of numerous soft tissue nodular masses in the pelvis that's resulting in significant mass effect on the pelvic structures. There's also new marked disten distension of the urinary bladder with moderate left and mild right hydronephrosis. That's concerning for a bladder out obstruction. He also has new large bilateral hydroceles. He got a chest x-ray done that was normal. It didn't show any pulmonary edema or infiltrates. For his lower extremity ultrasound, that showed marked soft tissue swelling of the left lower extremity and the right lower extremity, no evidence of DVT. And of note, he has a TTE in our system from six months ago that showed a normal EF and normal diastolic function and normal valves. So in summary, Mr. K is a 67-year-old male with history of recurrent dedifferentiated chondrosarcoma on pembrolizumab, status post left hemipelvectomy and total hip replacement, and BPH complicated by urinary obstruction, who presents with acute and chronic lower extremity and scrotal swelling, found to have an AKI in the setting of enlarging pelvic masses causing bladder outlet obstruction and bilateral hydronephrosis. So for his first problem, his bilateral asymmetric lower extremity edema, which is what brought him in, left greater than right, that's most likely secondary to volume overload due to his AKI, in addition to vascular compression by these pelvic masses. He had a bilateral lower extremity ultrasound that was negative for a DVT, and he has a leukocytosis, but I have low concern for cellulitis because of his physical exam. I don't see any erythema, and there was no tenderness. So my plan for this is to treat the AKI, which is my next problem. So for his AKI on CKD stage two, I think it's most likely post-renal due to bladder outlet obstruction that's causing hydronephrosis. He may have a component pre-renal as well because he did report poor PO intake and he has a high spec grav on his UA. His UA is bland, so I don't think there's an intrarenal AKI and he denies any recent medication changes. So for further workup, I'm gonna add on a BUN to the metabolic panel. Then for management, I'm gonna consult urology. A Foley has already been placed and if there's no improvement in the AKI after the Foley, we'll consult IR for consideration for nephrostomy tubes. He already received a liter of NS, and for monitoring, we're gonna trend his creatinine daily and do strict eisenose. For his recurrent dedifferentiated chondrosarcoma, that's now worsening. His CT showed evidence of an interval increase in the size of the masses in his pelvis, unfortunately, and this could also be contributing to his AKI and the bladder obstruction. So if there's no improvement in AKI with the Foley, then it could be that the vascular compression by the pelvic masses is playing a bigger role. So in that case, if the AKI doesn't improve, we'll consider his hemon consult. Otherwise, he'll follow up with his, with his outpatient oncologist for continued immunotherapy. For his leukocytosis, likely a combination of malignancy and hemoconcentration due to hypovolemia. I have low concern for infection at this time. There's no fever, no other localizing source signs of infection on exam or imaging. Uh, so I'm going to do IV fluids, as I mentioned, and trend to CBC daily and monitor him off antibiotics. For his hyperkalemia, it's mild. It's most likely secondary to his AKI on CKD. I expect improvement with treatment of the AKI. He already got a dose of Localma in the ER, so we'll just make sure he has bowel movements and we'll repeat his BMP in the morning. For his chronic stable issues, he has BPH, will continue his tamsulosin, 0.8 milligrams daily at bedtime. For his iron deficiency anemia, his hemoglobin's at his baseline. We'll continue his ferrous sulfate every other day. For his cancer-related pain, we'll continue gabapentin, 300 milligrams TID, and oxycodone, 5 milligrams every six hours as needed for breakthrough pain. For his inpatient checklist, DVT prophylaxis, we'll hold it for now because he may go for a procedure with IR if he needs nephrostomy tubes. GI prophylaxis, not indicated. He has no central lines. For tubes and drains, he has a Foley catheter in today's day one. I don't anticipate any discharge needs. And for costas, he's full code. And that's it. That was an oral presentation for a guy who came in with lower extremity swelling due to an AKI. So I'm sure it wasn't perfect. There are always improvements that can be made, 
but I hope that it gives you a general idea of what kind of details would be important in a patient who's coming in with both lower extremity swelling and an AKI. And again, I'm gonna leave a link below in the description box to the note that I was reading off of so that you can kind of see how I write my notes as well. And once again, please like and subscribe to support my channel. I really, really do appreciate you guys and I love what I do. And I'm gonna continue hopefully pumping out videos that are helpful. Thanks guys, bye.